Hello, I'm Dr. Jenna Bauer, and I'm going to be leading you through a relaxing bolster sequence. This is a very restorative sequence of poses that can help to relieve stress and anxiety, that can help to calm your mind and your body, that can help to soothe with mild depression. The purpose of using the bolster in these poses is to provide your body with an added support to allow it to fully relax and release into the poses. If you're practicing this series at home and you don't have a bolster, that's okay. You can use some pillows or you can also use a thick blanket rolled up in place of the bolster. I recommend that you hold each of these poses for at least one minute and up to five minutes or more if that feels comfortable for you. You can practice all the poses in a longer sequence, or you can also just pick a few of the poses to do and maybe hold them for a longer amount of time to allow yourself to get the full benefits of the poses. To begin, we're going to start with supported child's pose. So opening your knees out wide with your feet together, slide the bolster between your legs, and then allow your upper body to relax down onto the bolster, releasing your arms down into the mat. Take deep, full breaths, just fully allowing yourself to release into this pose. Gently press yourself up, moving into supported downward facing dog pose. Tucking your toes, pressing your hips back into the sky, and allowing your forehead to rest down onto the bolster to give a little support for your head. And then again, try to take deep, easy breaths allowing yourself to relax into this pose, making sure to keep a slight bend in the back of your knees to release in your hamstrings. And gently coming down onto all fours, moving into supported reclining twist pose. So sitting your knees facing perpendicular to the bolster, bringing the bolster into your hip, and then gently relaxing down over the bolster, twisting in one direction. Your head can look away from your knees, or if that strains your neck, it can also look towards your knees, whatever feels most comfortable for you. And then again, allow yourself to relax into this pose, releasing your shoulders and your arms down into the mat. Taking deep, easy breaths. And then when you're ready to switch sides, gently press yourself up and come over onto the other hip, twisting the spine in the other direction, making sure that you're even through both sides of your spine, holding the other side just as long as you held the first side. And again, taking either neck position that's comfortable for you. And when you're ready, slowly press yourself up, moving now into supported pigeon pose. There's a few options for the bolster support. The first is to put the bolster underneath your hip. So you're gonna slide your front leg in front of the bolster, sitting your hip and bottom on the edge of the bolster, and then extend your other leg out long. You can relax your upper body down, resting your head on your arms, allowing yourself to release forward in this pose. So just relax down into the bolster. Even though the stretch can be more intense in the hip, allowing the rest of your body to release. And once again, making sure that you do both sides, holding each side for the same amount of time. Finding that position that's most comfortable to you to hold that pose. Another option for supported pigeon is to use the bolster under your torso to support your upper body. 
The bolster can be held the long direction. And you just bring your knee up to the bolster and then relax your upper body down onto the bolster, resting your head and your chest onto the bolster to release down. And then switching to the other side so that your legs are even, you get a nice stretch in both hips. Continuing to hold the pose on the other side, allowing yourself to breathe deeply into your belly and fully relax down into the bolster. slowly pressing yourself up and coming into supported seated forward bend pose. So extending your legs out in front of you, take the bolster on top of your legs. And depending on how flexible your hamstrings are, you can prop the bolster up taller or down, whatever helps to support your body. Your arms can hug the bolster in or they can also relax down into the mat. Or they can cross over, allowing your forehead to rest on your hands or the bolster. Again, finding the place where you can most easily relax into this pose, moving the bolster around further in towards your body or out, depending on what you're needing. Next, coming into supported head to knee forward bend pose. So bending one leg in, keeping the other extended out. And again, you're just going to relax forward over the bolster. You can keep the bolster the long way over your leg, relaxing yourself down, resting down into the mat, keeping your arms rested on the bolster. You can also relax your arms down into the mat, letting them hang down at your sides. Another option is to put the bolster the short way and then rest yourself, your head, your arms onto the edge of the bolster. Again, whatever pose you take, make sure it feels easy and relaxing to hold. And making sure you switch to the other leg as well. Again, picking your position for the billow, extending it out long over the length of your leg, relaxing over the bolster. Releasing your head and your torso down towards the ground. Or turning the bolster to the side so you can just relax your head and arms onto the bolster for support as you bend forward over that leg. Moving into our next pose, supported reclining bound angle. So slide the bolster the long way directly behind you as you're sitting up. And gently relax down onto the bolster so your head and your upper back are supported against the bolster. Have the soles of your feet together and your knees out wide, allowing your legs to form a diamond opening up through the hips and releasing your arms out wide to the side, giving a nice opening through the chest. And as you're relaxing in this pose, breathing deep into your belly, just feeling the gentle rise and fall. Gently pressing yourself up when you're ready to transition. Next, we'll move into supported legs up the wall pose. So for this pose, push your bolster close to the wall. 
Then lay on your side, gently rolling over, placing your hips on top of the bolster, extending your legs out up the wall. You may need to scoot your hips out a little bit from the wall, depending on how tight your hamstrings are. If this feels too intense of a stretch in the back of your legs, scoot your hips, the bolster, further away from the wall. The goal is to find a position that you can let your legs completely relax. This pose is very restorative when we spend the whole day standing on our legs. This helps to recirculate the blood and restore the legs. When you're ready to come out, gently bend the knees into your chest, and then easily roll over onto your side, pressing yourself up to a seated position. Our final pose is supported corpse pose, also known as Shavasana. Placing the bolster under knees can be very helpful to release any tension that you may feel in your lower back just helping you to relax down into the mat. This is the ultimate restorative pose to help you release down and relax. When you're ready to come out, gently roll over onto your right side. Rest there for a moment in fetal pose. And then when you feel ready, slowly press yourself up to seated. Again, we move through these poses fairly quickly, but when you're practicing on your own, I encourage you to hold each pose for one to five minutes to fully get the full benefits of the pose. Enjoy.